there can be a step taken in the right direction, right? There's always uh, uh, something to move into. Um, it's just, so we, we don't think that way. We're not like, we're not wired to, to think that way. Right, and I was like, for most people, man, you could be great, but you haven't even pulled a strip off to activate. Right, like you can be great, but you're living on reserve. Right, you didn't, you didn't empty the bucket, right? You didn't give everything you had to every aspect of your life. Like for most people, they're great professionally, but they end up becoming a public success and behind closed doors, they're private failure. This is one of the most powerful motivational videos with Inky Johnson and Eddie's Pinero. Today's video is sponsored by Mullingmores.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world. But before that, get your motivation with Inky Johnson and Eddie Pinero. Empty the bucket, man, was this thing that um, I created just about emptying everything, right? Like everything you got, not living on reserve, right? And I'll tell you where it came from. So when I was a freshman, I had a roommate, right? Extremely talented. He's my guy until this day. Like we're super cool. That's my brother, right? But when we first got our financial aid checks and I got like 2,500, you know, and he got something I think close to 4,000, right? And we came from similar places, similar backgrounds, similar family experience. And I was like, I'm going to the bank. I'm gonna open up me an account. I've never had this much money. And I was like, man, you need to come to the bank, open up you an account. And he was like, I'm gonna spend this. Ink, I'm gonna spend all this. And I was like, man, you wanna save a little bit of your money? He's like, no, nah, that's the problem. I might not get this much again. And I was like, just come with me to the bank. And so I go to the bank, open up me an account. He opens up an account, he gets this card. And we go to the store and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Right, he started buying everything. Give me that, give me those shoes. And we get to the counter and the lady is ringing it up and he gives her the card and she swipes the card and the card didn't go through. Right, and he looks at me and I'm like, man, don't look at me, big spender, you the baller. Right, and he was like, ma'am, can you swipe it again? And she swipes it again and it didn't go through. And he looks at me and I'm like, don't look at me, man, look at her. And he's like, ma'am, the football office gave me the money. Can you please try it again? I know I got the money. And when she swiped it, it didn't go through. And as she was handing him the card back, she said to him, sir, you probably have the money, but you didn't pull the strip off to activate it. She was like, you never activated the card, right? And I was like, for most people, man, you could be great, but you haven't even pulled a strip off to activate it, right? Like you can be great, but you're living on reserve. Right. You didn't you didn't empty the bucket. Right. You didn't give everything you had to every aspect of your life. Like for most people, they're great professionally, but they end up becoming a public success. And behind closed doors, they're private failure, not because they don't have the talent or the skill set. They don't have the character. Right. That they can apply it and be consistent in every aspect of their life and empty out everything they got to everything. All right. Now, one would say, OK, well, when do you tone it back? Right. You find pockets to turn it back, turn it back, right? Of course, you don't just give everything you got all the time, right? You get to a point to where you learn to be efficient and effective in every aspect of your life. And for most people, it's not a problem of skill set. It's a problem of character. And empty the bucket is having the right character to be consistent and empty out everything you got in every aspect of your life. I think, uh, man, it's... It's funny. I think the true measure of wealth is uh, is happiness, right? Like I really do. And that's not saying that I'm against money. I'm not against that at all. Because you gotta gotta work hard, make your money to take care of your family, and be able to bless people. But I think it's a lot of people with so-called wealth, and they don't have joy and they don't have happiness, right? And I feel like joy, happiness is peace and peace. It's the most important things we can possess, right? And for most people, their material possessions, they feel are the most important. For me, when you got joy, when you got peace, when you got happiness, I think that's true wealth because you can't put a price on that. Like for me, people can't understand. A guy asked me just yesterday, what do you think about stem cell? Why don't you go over to London or one of these places somewhere and try to get stem cell for your arm? And I was like, I got peace. And he's like, what does that mean? I was like, I'm good with my situation, right? Like I'm, I'm wealthy because of that. I got something that you can't 
put a price on, right? You can't price out my joy. You can't price out my happiness. You can't price out my peace. Now, if I measure wealth by money, money is a number. Numbers never end, right? So you never catch it. Numbers never stop. If your happiness is predicated upon a number, if you're being wealthy, it's predicated upon a number, you'll get it. Then it's like, okay, I got to set it a little bit higher. The number will never end. And so therefore, you'll never be wealthy enough. Uh, this is me making assumptions here, but um, well, not assumptions on this. Very, very skilled person, motivated person, um, highly driven, could probably be extremely successful in a corporate job working or the leather. And you decided to stop that. And my, my assumption is that probably put yourself in a more compromised situation financially, right. uh, difficult situation to help others. I, I, I'd, I'd love to know why. Like, what, what's the reasoning behind behind that? Yeah, uh, two reasons: impact and upside. Um, <clears throat> you know, I can have a better impact doing what I'm doing. When you're in the corporate world, I mean, sure, you can impact the people around you, you can help your business, uh, but it's you know, I wasn't. My heart and soul was not in the mission. It's it's really hard to, you know, get up every day and be excited about something when you're just not uh, in it. You know, and I wanted to feel it. I wanted to live and breathe it. The other thing is when it's your business, um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you'll get out what you put in. And I love that. It's like if I want to stay in bed all day, I could, but I'd get nothing. But getting out and stepping into this, this sort of unknown, the infinite potential, who knows what can happen? Right, and and that's evolution has been the most fun. I mean, I've talked to people, uh, you know, gone places. I've participated in projects, done things that never really dreamed of doing, um, because I sort of took on that risk. And you know, entrepreneurs know that, artists know that, um, everyone does in some capacity. Uh, but this, uh, you know, eight-year journey now has certainly reinforced it. Why helping people? Like, you know, there's gaming out there. You, you, there's so many different genres of YouTube you probably could have been successful at. Why help people? Feels good. It feels good. I, it's, uh, one is, is I love personally the idea of perspective and mindset. Um, I'm fascinated by it. And two, just to, to take something that you've lived and give that to someone else who, you know, might be in a different place in their life, might be doing something totally different. Uh, but that connection that's like, hey, you know, you went through that, you learned that lesson. And in my totally different corner of the universe, I'm applying it and, uh, you know, it, it's changed everything for me. And, and I can't even articulate it. It's just such a beautiful feeling um, that, yeah, I mean, I, I knew that was sort of my lane. You know, I just love it. I think the greatest gifts in life and it's belief and exposure, right? Because a lot of times for me personally, the reason I say that is it was a lot of moments in my life to where it was people that saw things in me that I couldn't see in myself. And they believed in me in a way that I couldn't believe in myself yet. And I rented their level of belief until I got strong enough to possess my own, right? It's like when you're young and they see you and it's like, even when you start out doing what you're doing, you could be talented, right? And somebody older than you or more experienced than you can see you and know like, oh man, if he did this, or if he does this, man, he could be great, right? And they can come to you and say, hey kid, man, you got something. Like you could be great, right? Like my teachers and my coaches, when they came to me and they was like, son, I'm telling you, like you could go to college, man. Like you really, I know you're talking about it, but your circumstances are saying different. I think you can do it, right? And when they said it, I'm like, oh, I can, I can do it. Like I can make it happen because they're believing in me making it happen. I think I can do it. So I think belief and the reason I say exposure is because like, I think when you show people things, that's powerful. I think exposure sparks inspiration, right? Exposure sparks motivation. Like when I was coming up in that two bedroom house with all those people, and I went to the other side of town with my coach. And he was like, no, people don't, you don't have to live like that. Eh? You can live a normal life, right? It changed my whole mindset. 
and my mindset can never go back to the way that it once was because I have been exposed to something different, to something new. And so I think belief and exposure are two of the most powerful things that can happen to a person. The reason that um, I think belief is important is because like when you're young or when you do something and you're a novice, right? And you start out doing it and you might think you can do something with it or you might not, you might do it and it's being driven by your passion. And then somebody comes along that's a little bit older or even more experienced and they can see it in a way that you can't see it, right? And so I think it's important with belief because if a person believes in you in a way that you don't believe in yourself, you can rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own, right? And you use that person's belief to fuel you every single day, right? Because you can have a level of belief with what you're doing, but you can go back to a certain set of circumstances that tell you, nah, it's not gonna happen. And so you rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own. I think um, I think having a purpose is that thing that that makes us tick, that gets us up every day and gets us over the hump of opposition and adversity. And the reason that I champion adversity and opposition is because I think for the most part in life, people pretty much know what to do when things go right, right? Like when things go right, they know how to feel, they know how to act, how to react. But it's when that opposition and that adversity comes and it creates a level of misunderstanding, right? Now the vision is blurred. Now you don't have clarity about what you're supposed to do. Now you question if your existence matters. And I think when you have a purpose, it's powerful because in the midst of the opposition, it makes you realize that you've been put here for a certain reason. And so me, once I tapped into my purpose of once I thought it was football, right? But when I started speaking, I'll never forget the day I got the exact same feeling backstage that I used to get before I ran out on the field to play football. And that's when I knew like, this is my purpose. This is what I've been put here to do. And so the opposition, adversity, the challenges, it's just a part of the process. It's gonna make me a better person. But my purpose, I can't let anything stop or detour me from tapping into that every single day because the key with purpose is, I firmly believe every person's purpose is tied to somebody else's purpose and destiny. And so your purpose, my purpose, is tied to somebody else, like when I speak, when I do what I do, like people say, all oh, man, man, I really needed to hear that, right? That helped me do this. That helped get me through this. That helped me with this. That's my purpose being tied to other people's purpose, destiny, beliefs, and dreams. That's the power and magic of purpose, right? I don't think it can be a purpose without being tied to other people's purpose, destiny, dreams, and aspirations, right? I think that's the power in it, but realizing it is another thing. Like failure at some point doesn't mean things went wrong. At some point failure means I decided to stop, right? And there's a very big difference because um, you could have a catastrophic event. All, all this, you know, all this equipment could get stolen, but you could figure out a way, maybe with lesser equipment to get to the next shoot and the next and the next and the next. So it, it really comes down to a decision. Um, a decision to move forward, right? And in terms of, of spreading yourself thin, like too, too much, um, you know, it's, it's what's your value add and how do you best do that? How do you best give that to the world? Um, like a very pragmatic example would be people ask me a lot, of, a lot about like uh, what social platforms do I post on, right? There's an infinite amount of social platforms. And, you know, some of the advice out there is, you put it everywhere. Uh, you know, my thought is, and this is probably a, you know, a microcosm of the, the bigger, bigger uh, answer overall. It's like, you pick the one that allows you to best be you and go all in on that. Um, you learn about yourself, you build a community, uh, and you find your lane, right? So if, if you are a great communicator, you love sitting down and having a conversation, uh, it would be the podcast, right? If you're uh, pictures, Instagram. Um, you know, videos, YouTube, and, and you get the point. Um, but it's, it's understanding you, uh, your skill set, your value add, and uh, how to best bring that to the world. Yeah, well, there's, uh, 
there's an idea that, um, I think this is from the happiness hypothesis. Uh, if you took all the wealth from the top 10%, they'd have it back in X number of years, uh, not because of their equipment or you know their, their, the things they have around them, but because they've acquired um, the mentalities and the understandings and the skills uh, to recreate that. And so for me, it's like, yeah, I've slowly been building up you know, equipment in, in a studio and, and um, these little luxuries, but over a decade, I've learned to help people through storytelling. You can't steal that. You know, I can't lose that. Um, you know, or, or speaking in a way that um, helps people think about things differently, how to package that, how to turn that into, uh, you know, a scalable business. That's up here and that's not going anywhere. And uh, so there's comfort in that, you know, um, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what the, uh, the, the process is. It's, it's an armor that you wear. I think uh, Nietzsche has a quote. He says, those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who couldn't hear the music. Um, I think in a perfect world, uh, people say that his work and his message helped me realize that it was okay to dance before the music played. That, you know, I was strong enough, that I, I was courageous enough uh, to move towards what's meaningful to me um, and, and took action on that. I think if that's, if that's something that people said after I was gone, I'd be very, very happy with that. I think um, we help people in different ways, right? It's almost like leadership, right? You find some leaders that are vocal, right? That can talk. You find other leaders that lead by example. They're not big talkers, right? They're just the guys you watch. They're gonna do their thing and you can point to them and say, Hey man, you see the way that guy works and does his thing, follow him. And I think the same for opposition and adversity. You find some people, they can work their way through it and then they can speak about it and tell people. You got others that deal with it and they can work their way through it and you almost have to pry it out of them. And so it's like for me with speaking, I never wanted to speak, never had any interest in it, right? Never said, man, I want to go across the country, share my story. I wasn't interested. I wanted to coach. When that fell through, I wanted to work at a rec center in my neighborhood, create leadership curriculums for the kids and just give back to them. And one day I was talking with my buddy and he just made me realize like what you went through just wasn't for you. Right. Basically, like I was being selfish about my situation and my experience. Right. He was like, you're going through it. You got through it. You're dealing with it. But that's not just for you. Like when we go through a situation and circumstance, it's easy to step back and think, man, I just went through this and it's just my experience. I firmly believe when we go through things, it's for us to deal with it, get over it and reach back over the hill to help another person. And a lot of times, like you said, when you're trying to work through it, you think, man, how can I help somebody? And I'm trying to get through it myself. Right. And that's a great perspective. Right. But when you get through it, Right. Maybe you can't help them when you're in the midst of it because you're processing it. But when you get over the hill, I think it's important and I think it's vital that you reach back over the hill and help somebody that may be going through a similar situation. And you can share your values and principles with them because that experience that we go through and we deal with is not just for us. So, um, you know, a lot of athletes and, you know, I don't want to speak for all, but a lot of athletes are extremely driven. Right. They're self-starters. Right? Like the guys that I was with at the University of Tennessee, they were all incredible, man, in their own way, because you have the best of the best. You have high performance from everywhere. And so it's like you come from high school and you're the man at this high school, right? And you come from this high school and you're great. And then another guy comes from his high school and he's great. Then they put you all in this pot. And it's like all these great athletes from this great high school or wherever it was, their great city. And you put them together and you say, all right, let's compete. You got the best of the best. And you got some guys that shy away from competition. They're like, I was the man in high school. I shouldn't have to compete, right? You know what I bring to the table. You got other guys that say, I want to compete against the best. I want to go against the best every single day. Not that I'm trying to say I'm the best. I want to go against the best because I know it's going to sharpen me up and make me a better person. And so for the most part, athletes struggle with, I feel, identity. Right. Because you're coming up your whole life and you've been told 
man, you're great. Like you're awesome. You're being given things, right? Because of your athletic ability, because of your skill set. And then you get to a point, if you don't make it to the NFL, or even if you make it to the NBA, Major League Baseball, even if you make it, at a certain point, it's going to end and stop, right? And people are going to say, you're a great player, right? But the perks are going to stop. They're not going to bow down to you anymore. And a lot of guys, the thing that breaks them is the transition. When you got to go from sports to life. And now your identity and what you did in sports is cool, but it's not so much important anymore, right? When you get a job in corporate, they expect you to produce and not talk about your stats all day, right? When you get married to your wife, like you got to learn obedience and compromising as well, right? But when you're coming from this athletic background, you used to everybody just praising you and telling you how great you are. And so it's struggling with that identity, but also being extremely talented, been extremely gifted, but when you get out of this setting of where people praise you, can you take the things you learned that made you great in that sport and apply them to other areas and aspects of your life to make you just as great as a person? Um, for, for yourself, like, do you remember those difficult moments? Like, is, it so, is there a day specifically that comes up for yourself? Um, I wouldn't say anything catastrophic, but I would say a lot of I mean, there were times where keynotes didn't go well, um, you know, and now that's a huge portion of what I do. But I remember, you know, being backstage, you know, sweating with the microphone and thinking like, you know, why am I doing this? Um, and, you know, getting through and, and just, you know, learning from it and picking up the pieces and continuing to move forward. Um, same thing with like the YouTube space. Um, you know, I've worked in projects that, that didn't necessarily do well. It's just, it's almost like what we were talking about before. It like really is a thick skin in being able to understand here's where I want to be, A, B, and C. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be most likely uh, one crack of the bat that takes you there. It's going to be continuing to get up after the swings and misses. And, you know, that's when, when I look back at the past eight years, I mean, there were plenty or plenty, uh, but you, again, you take the, you extract the value from them and, uh, you know, put it into, into the next step, into the next project. How do you keep the resilience, like, and, and or, or even develop the resilience to keep, keep going, keep go, get, go, getting up and going up for another swing? It's become my identity. I burn the boats, right? So it's like, you know, Eddie Pinero, founder of Your World Within, uh, that's it, right? That's what it's gonna be. And when you give yourself no other option uh, other than to, you know, elevate that brand and, and try and add value to as many lives as possible, it's all you can think about, right? I mean, you were asking, what do you do for fun? And it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, even in my free time, I'm daydreaming about different things to, uh, to create, different ways to articulate uh, messages. Um, it's just, I love it. And so there is really no plan B. And, and for me, that's made all the difference and in it's been sort of you know it's gotten stronger and stronger and stronger um you know over the years where everything is now consolidated into this i think societally uh victimhood is becoming the currency and i think it's a it's an incredibly dangerous game to play you know and, and i see it the most on on TikTok. um you know not to not to generalize but it happens to be where uh you know you see people truly reaching out for attention, pointing about, or you know, projecting out at the world for being wronged. Um, and it's like, I don't know your situation. I, I couldn't place myself in your shoes. But what I can tell you is that there's no value ever in pointing out and blaming at the world. It's, it's what can I do to fix the situation. What can I, it's like Will Smith's comment, you can't control where you started, but you can always control where you go from here. Uh, ambition, personal responsibility, personal agency will change your life. I mean, the issue is, is that it's harder. It's harder to look in the mirror to point in to say, all right, what can I do differently? That's never an easy question. Um, but I think it's, you know, when that light bulb went off for me, it had a profound impact on my life, right? It's, it's not your boss. It's not, you know, this person, that person, this person. It's, it's, 
you failing to navigate around what's in front of you. So Eddie, how can you step up and, and, and build something with these pieces? You know, and so when I think of ambition in today's day and age, I just think a, a lack of understanding just because it's so easy to point out and it's rewarded. Um, and, and whether the, the pendulum swings back, you know, I hope it will, I think it will. Um, but I think that message is, is uh, incredibly important in today's day and age. So yeah, taking ultimate accountability, like how, how important is it to be accountable for your actions? Everything. I mean, you can't, you don't control the car when you're riding shotgun. You just don't. So, you know, if you want to change your situation, you have to drive and you have to assume the risk, you know, and the responsibility and some of that stuff that's difficult. But again, that's the only way to get where you need to go. It's almost like, I think a black and white way to put it is, unless you are saying, what can I do better? You're powerless, right? I think it's that simple. Um, by pointing at anyone or anything else, you are um, removing your greatest superpower, your ability to do something about it. And then back to the point of um, victimhood, like, so we were speaking about this the other day, There's all, there is a social currency in being a victim or uh, going through traumatic experiences, but on the flip side of it is some of the, the greatest motivational and inspirational messages we've had is people sharing those moments of trauma and saying how they got through it. H how do you navigate, you know, not using it as a social currency now that we're, you know, we're at this point of, of social media, but also reaching over the hill and helping people back over yeah. with, with that story? Well, I mean, those, those speakers are, are perfect examples, you know? Um, you take, you know, Inky Johnson, for example. I could have, could have easily dwelled on his unfortunate uh, uh, situation, but no, he turned into a message that inspires millions of people. Um, hey, I was down and out. I lost everything. I thought my life was over, but I turned it around and you can too. Um, you know, and, and you're right. You, you always have to be, it's, it's never about minimizing trauma. Uh, because Again, I don't know what people have been through, and we've all been through some horrific stuff. Some people, you know, things I can't even imagine. The, the fact still remains at that point in time, whatever it may be to better your situation, there can be a step taken in the right direction, right? There's always uh, uh, something to move into. Um, it's just, so we, we don't think that way. We're not like, we're not wired to, to think that way. Um, you know, what can you turn that unfortunate situation into because there's something there. Thank you so much to Inky and Eddie, some of our greatest motivational speakers that we've managed to speak to, people in this world who we have followed for years and years and now we get to work with them and listen to their motivation and share it with you guys. If you gained something from this, please share it down below, comment down below and go follow Inky and Eddie with the links down below as well. Today's video was made possible with Mullingers.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world where you can now get the rise and grind and the hardest working in the room t-shirts. Um, guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.